after 10 years of cousin stuff, I'm definitely excited for the real thing. <laughs> Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So Fallout drops some major bombs in its season finale. Each of the main characters confronts their past in a major way, and our first look at what vault Tech has become 219 years into the future. The Enclave, the real people behind the curtain. Lucy is finally reunited with her father, only to learn that he was responsible for the bombing of Shady Sands, and indirectly, the death of her mother. And on top of that, a centuries-old vault Tech employee serving as part of an experiment to control other people. Because the future of humanity comes down to one word. Management. Lucy also reunites Wilzig's head with Moldaver, giving her the last piece she needs to complete the cold fusion reactor that she began centuries ago as a vault Tech competitor. This introduces an insanely powerful resource to the Wastelands just as the Brotherhood of Steel arrives to seize it. What do you suppose your Brotherhood would do with infinite power? Maximus, en route with the Brotherhood, arrives to save Lucy, inadvertently freeing Hank and allowing him to steal a power armor suit and knocking Maximus out cold. Side note, one detail we want to mention in this scene is the incredible orange sunset, a direct reference to Nat King Cole's orange colored sky from the series opening soundtrack. One out of an orange colored sky. The ghoul intervenes after dispatching a group of Brotherhood knights. I guess not. Revealing the ghoul and Hank having known each other from before the war. Oh, you want another autograph, young Henry? And implying that Hank knows where the ghoul's wife and daughter may be. Where's my family? Lucy's worldview is shattered when she learns the extent of her father's atrocities and joins the ghoul in pursuing him across the wasteland. Okie dokie. And Maximus is left standing over literally limitless power and no idea what to do with it. Maybe you can stop them. Maybe you can't. Maybe all you can do is try. In the final credit scene, we see Hank McLean staring over a crumbling city, his final destination seemingly reached. Is it another one of those vault things? Not a vault, but the people who built them, the Enclave. Or wasn't it Vault Tech who built all those? Well, yes and no. This episode revealed how before the war, Cooper's wife Barbara was involved with vault Tech and several other large, appropriately scummy companies and secretly accelerating nuclear conflict. By dropping the bomb ourselves. Including Robco, the creators of Matt Berry's Mr. Handy character. I, Bartholomew Codsworth, am ever ready to serve. <laughs> it's this same group that would eventually become the Enclave. The same scene also dropped some of the darkest Easter eggs in the show. Each experiment suggested were real experiments in real endgame vaults. Intentionally overcrowd a vault so people have to compete to survive inside it. And players could actually see the horrifying consequences. In the game series, the Enclave are a secret paramilitary cabal of politicians, scientists, and capitalist billionaires who think they are continuing the fight against communism and maintaining a pure humanity. But more than that, they were also the same organization behind vault Tech and the experiments they began conducting in the vaults themselves. We get a glimpse of the Enclave and their methods when we're first introduced to Wilzig and Dogmeat. Oh who are then targeted by the Brotherhood of Steel, setting the events of the series into motion, ironically mirroring the events at the dawn of the Great War. It is believed that the denizen of the Enclave has escaped. Now we know that there are over 100 vaults currently in existence, expanding across the entire United States. It's a safe bet that any of these locations could be potential settings for either expanding the narrative around the Enclave or introducing new characters or species lore. So before we talk about each character's respective ending, we have to talk a bit more about the game that inspired the show. Fallout is of course a post-apocalyptic role-playing game set in a fictional world where the world was wiped out by nuclear bombs at the height of the atomic age. The world is left desolate and mutated, with the last surviving humans struggling to survive, with that in mind, Fallout has to be one of the best video game adaptations to date. They even brought back the best character from the game. Is that a good place for you? Yeah, he's a heckin' good boy, isn't he? One of the reasons video game adaptations struggle is because of not being able to balance the experiences of playing as a character and watching one in a story. Fallout handles this balance very well. Top to bottom, you can tell the entire project was made with an immense amount of respect for its past source material, to the point that each character's story feels like a different way for a player to progress throughout the game. Lucy is a skilled diplomat character preferring to solve problems using reason and the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have done unto you. The ghoul is a gunsling and Renegade, symbolizing the combat-oriented player focusing on cool guns and the tough guy dialogue options. Now, I may not know much, but I do know a bidding war when I see one. Maximus is the well-meaning character, constantly choosing the wrong thing to say, but luckily manages to solve most problems with either his power armor or plot armor. <laughs> Thank you. 
A core tenet of the game series is the long-term effects of the player's choices impacting the game in very real ways, ranging from alliances with other characters to sometimes wiping out entire cities. When it released on October 10, 1997, it was one of the first titles to really make players feel the consequences of their in-game actions. But why does that seem so familiar? That's a great catch, buddy. This is also the code that Hank uses to unlock the Cold Fusion device while captive. The series focuses heavily on how the events of the past can have unavoidable or unexpected consequences, and how we we come to terms with them. The season finale culminates in a shift for each character as they face their past and decide how to move forward. Lucy's naive worldview stems from an idyllic character of the past and how she thinks the world is supposed to be. Her journey throughout the season has been about letting go of her preconceived notions of morality in favor of the more morally ambiguous surface world. Once she learns about her father decimating Shady Sands, her worldview just breaks. Let's just say that everything about your whole little world was decided over 200 years ago. For her, her future is now reconciling and making amends for the sins of her father and vault tech. Max's past and loss of his home left him always looking for a sense of home, which he always thought would be as a member of the Brotherhood. Your entire life you've been looking for a home. But since traveling with Lucy, Max begins questioning whether or not this is still the case. In his final scene, we see him finally bestowed with his own knighthood. But Max is now divided between the promises of his past with his hopes for a new future. The ghoul spends most of the first season burdened by an immense amount of guilt for being the face of the organization that helped destroy the world and for not being there for his family over 200 years ago. It's not until his reunion with Hank, aka Henry, that he gives himself the chance to feel hope that he may be able to see his family again, especially knowing that vault Tech staff were able to survive survive all the way into the future. And you can't really discuss the events of the past without coming back to vault Tech itself. What began as a capitalistic play on human fear to sell real estate turned into a legitimate dystopian apocalypse, especially once they secured the monopoly on survival. That is how we will win the great game of capitalism, not by outfighting anyone, but by outliving them. The unintended consequences of their decision was that humanity would survive regardless, leaving the rest of humanity at large to deal with the fallout of their actions, literally and figuratively speaking. So that's happened already. What's next for Dogmeat and his loyal companions? Well, Dogmeat, Lucy, and Ghoul are set to pursue Hank across the wasteland in hope of finding where the remains of the Enclave are hiding, with the potential to encounter other vaults and other hazards therein along the way. But Lucy's story specifically has one glaring loose end her brother Norman. Norman is last seen in Vault 31 preparing to climb into his father's old stasis pod after being trapped in the vault. That's why I'd suggest you wait it out in your dad's pod. Now we know that these pods are capable of keeping a person alive for 200 plus years, so there's a possibility that we could see Norman later emerge as a future protagonist after a potential time skip. It's not impossible and it would be an interesting nod to the opening of Fallout 4. The Brotherhood of Steel is also being set up to serve as a larger antagonist presence. The cleric made his intentions very clear that he wants to establish himself as a new seat of Brotherhood power. We will start a new Brotherhood with me as its head and the likes of you as its sword. And Maximus has now unintentionally delivered a brand new cold fusion reactor straight into the cleric's hands. The Brotherhood are reactionary purists and very territorial when it comes to protecting and scavenging pre-war technology, to an actually religious degree. With a new fusion reactor, this gives the Brotherhood a technological edge in the wastelands, and more importantly, the means to begin seizing any other technology that they deem to be theirs by right. With vaults being one of the last known sources of any remaining pre-war technology, the Brotherhood could begin their own version of a crusade against the remaining vaults under the guise of preservation. Bunch of old guys talked about the Crusades. I thought this was in the future. History does repeat itself, buddy. The Brotherhood and the Enclave both represent factions bound by the past, just as much as any of the regular cast. There are some key differences in philosophy, though. While they might have a warped idea of shared humanity, the Brotherhood is ultimately about the collective good, or at least their version of the collective good. The Enclave still remains a group of politicians and businessmen, still viewing the world in terms of assets and resources to be divided and hoarded amongst the highest bidders. You're a product, I'm a product. The end of the world is a product. Two groups with such a vested interest in technology and power will inevitably come to clash, and that's not including the already tense friction between the two. Hank demonstrated the links the Enclave was willing to go to to get what they need, and the Cleric would absolutely be willing to use the reactor to expand the Brotherhood's reach. With both Wastelanders and Vault Dellers both being potentially caught in the middle, the second season has massive potential to really push its characters past the limits of what they think they'd be capable of. And season two may give us one more piece of the greater Fallout world as well. Super Mutants. You're mean.
Different mutants, but we're almost there. Super mutants are humanoid mutants caused by exposing humans to a virus that forces evolution, possibly something similar to experiments originally run in Vault 4. If this is the case, our first super mutants could be Thaddeus, Maximus's almost squire. After huffing a strange unknown chemical from a morally dubious chicken enthusiast slash drug dealer to heal his foot, <laughs> Thaddeus gains abnormal healing abilities and then flees before being captured by the Brotherhood. Thaddeus isn't quite ghoul, he remains intelligent, and could easily become the beginning of a new sentient race that struggles to establish itself on the wasteland. Fallout has a ton of interesting lore and bizarre creature design that Amazon has only barely scratched the surface of, and next season is going to have a lot of material to play with. So what did you guys think about the ending of Fallout's first season? Let us know in the comments below or at me on Twitter, and if it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Thank you.